Hello and welcome. So this will be the project you'll have in this tutorial. You'll see it says minutes, but for demonstrations I've turned it to seconds. So I'm going to change it to three seconds and press play. I'm going to go to the right. You'll see it's just saved now. So I'm going to close it down. I'm going to open it again and you'll notice that it saved our auto save as well as our location. So let's get into it. So I want you to make a new TD node, call it main. And I want you to save that into your scenes directory. Now place a button. I've made mine save and play, but exit. Label for saying auto save in minutes, make sure it's LBL auto save. Finally, put a H slider, which will look like this. And for my H slider, I've used min value one, max value 60, and I've changed value to five by default. They're the only variables I've changed. Now for the auto save object, we're gonna to go to the auto save here. I want you to make a new node. It's gonna be an animated sprite and change it to auto save animation underscore new frames and then I want you to make an animation but make sure it's not looped it's really important we're going to make another scene it's another no 2d called game and then we're going to add in a sprite called player and I've just used the icon for our default the position is 480 by 240 and the very last scene is a game manager which is just a normal node on your game manager I want to add a script in my scripts folder I'm going to remove this, save. We want to go to our project, so project settings, auto load. We're going to go to our path and locate objects and our game manager. Open that, add it, make sure singleton enabled is true and close. Now this will be running at all times in our project. Now return to our auto save underscore animation. We're going to add a script. In the function ready, you want plain to equals true. So what happens when this loads it will automatically play the animation. Let's delete these comments. Now click auto save underscore animation, go to node and double click animation finished. Connect. What we want to do here is just Q3. So all that's happening here is when this load is instanced, it plays the loop. Once the loop is finished, it deletes itself. This is used only for visual feedback to the player. We're gonna to go to game manager and I'm gonna put in these vars. The first one is an export packed scene and that's going to be our auto save object which is this here. We then go to the inspector, we see the auto save scene here, click this, load and we want to find it. There it is. Game data as a dictionary is going to save our auto save length as well as our player's position which is player x, player y. We'll use auto save start time as a counter to how many seconds have passed. Then if we're playing we can load the auto save logic. Before saving the game data dictionary, we need to make sure that the dictionary is updated with the latest three variables, the player x, player y, and auto save length. To do that, we do this function. This function will get the game data and update it with the newest values. So we'll do the save function now. So before we save, of course, we want to update the data, else we will be saving old data. We'll get a new file. We'll find this directory. If the file doesn't exist in that directory, it's okay, it'll make a new one, but make sure you've got the directory here. Mine's saved underscore game. Then we're gonna save the dictionary as a JSON. We're finished with it now, so we can file close. We're gonna do load. You'll notice that do load has a bool, and the reason for this is it's determined if we're starting a new game or loading an old game, and it'll be explained further on. So we start a new file. We use file exist to determine if we've got a saved file. If we haven't, then we're starting a new game, so we return false. If we have, we're loading a new game, we return true. We then open the file because we know it's saved to. We then pass the JSON we saved previously into a dictionary, then we close it because we've finished this file. Now that game data is updated with the last save, I'll show you a save file, what it looks like. And here you can see we've got an option field and we've got the player data field here. And inside you've got an array. So this array only contains one, and this array contains two values. Let's close this. We then update the three values from our saved file. This means when we load up the game, the auto save length will be correct, and the player will be positioned correctly too. Now I'm gonna do the auto save logic inside the game manager, because it'll always be loaded in the background. Using physics process, I'm gonna check that if we're playing, this will be true when we go to play the game we'll do the auto save logic. So let's make that function. So one thing I should explain before auto save logic function is you've got a value here. Now this value is actually going to be set when we press play. 
so this won't be zero by default. And what the value is, it's os.getUnixTime. If you watch my previous tutorial, I explained the epoch, but I'll go over it quickly just now. And what epochs or Unix time, whichever you want to call it, it tells you how many seconds have passed from this date. So it's the first day, the 1st January 1970. So you manage a lot of seconds. So what we do is we store this number, and as you can see, it goes up. So when we remove this old number from the new number, we'll, we are left with how many seconds have been passed since we last pressed play. Let's close this down. So if time passed is greater than the auto length, which is five by default, times 60, which is five minutes, then we're gonna do our auto save. We get the packed scene I defined up earlier, which is here. It's the auto save scene. We put it in the bottom right corner. I've hard coded it, not the best way. And we add it to the game manager. What happens there is gonna show the animation and then it'll delete itself. We'll then save the values which are the most recent. Once that's done, we wanna change auto save start time to the new Unix time. This automatically will make time passed equal zero and then it'll go one, two, three, etc. That's all the code we need for game manager. We're gonna do the player next. So go to your game scene, go to your player and we're gonna add a script. I'm gonna copy and paste the code and explain it. So we've got movement speed of three. In function ready, we'll make sure that our player is positioned correctly. If we loaded the game, the player X and Y will be updated. However, if we haven't loaded the game, they'll be the default values. Then easily, this is just using the arrow keys to move left, right, and up, down. We then update the player X and Y of the game manager with the position of the player. This means that if we auto save, it'll always be accurate. We've now finished all the code for the player, so let's go back to main. You'll see the H slider, here. If we move this in the game at the moment, this label won't update, so we'll change that now. To do that, we're gonna need a script on the main. I'm just gonna delete this and copy some paste code. When we first load the game, function ready will be called. We'll then check do load equals true. If it does equal true, we want to load up the values, else we're gonna leave them on default, which will be five. This will change the H sliders value and also the label text. Now we're moving the H slider value we want the text to update to, so let's do that now. Click the H slider autosave, go to node, go to changed value in your main, connect, and paste this code in. We update the label so it says autosave in minutes. We then change the value here to an int. The reason for that, it'll be dot zero at the end, we don't want that. Then we change the value back to a string and we connect it to the autosave in minutes. And of course, because the player's moving it, we want to make sure the game manager auto save length is the most recent one. So it will save when we press play and save. And we want to do the play and save now. Click the button play, go to the node, go to your pressed and connect it. And then move this and copy and paste. When we click save and play, we're going to do save. And the reason for that is if we've changed the auto save length here, this will then make sure it's saved. We'll then make sure game manager .playing equals true, and this will make sure the auto logic is being run at all times. Then explained earlier, we'll make sure that the auto start time is the Unix time of now, and this will help us count down the seconds until we do our auto save. And once all that's done, is we're gonna go to the actual game itself. So that's everything complete, we're gonna play it in a second. The only issue is, is that it's in minutes and we don't wanna wait a whole minute. So I'm gonna change this just to one second. Let's press play. Now I'm gonna change this to three seconds. I'm gonna press save and play, and I'm gonna move it to the left. Sure enough, it's saved. Let's close it, open it again. Sure enough, it's three seconds and it should be to the left, perfect. Now to get it in minutes again, we're gonna change this to 60, and now it's ready. So you'll notice before I go, is this is actually saved on a weird screen. You'd actually have an option button and then you'd do it there, but I just wanted to focus on the most simple way of doing this. So that concludes the end of the tutorial. I hope it helped and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.